Hey now, this is Howard Weiner, the author of Deadology, The 33 Essential Dates of Grateful Dead History. We're going to take a look at one of those essential dates, July 10th. This day in Dead Garcia history features a show in Bill Graham's Fillmore East, collaborations with Bob Dylan and the Neville Brothers in football stadiums, and a legendary Jerry performance with Merle Saunders and John Kahn that was captured on live at Keystone. Today I'm going to discuss the two July 10th shows that I had the pleasure of seeing. JFK Stadium, Philadelphia was the site of the second Dylan Dead show of the historic six concert tour that featured the Dead playing a show of their own, as well as serving as Bob Dylan's backing band. In 1987, there was unbridled optimism in the Grateful Dead universe. Jerry's recovery from a life-threatening coma the summer before was remarkable. And four days prior to the JFK extravaganza, the band released their first album in seven years, In the Dark. And now, they were living out a fantasy by playing with the man himself, Bob Dylan. In JFK, the Dead played one long set without break. It was a much better outing than the one set affair before the first Dylan Dead show on July 4th in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Ico Ico is the festive opener of 71087, and it's followed by a Jack Straw sugary assault, during which Garcia steams all solos. The band's tight, and Weir sings boldly. Jack Straw enthusiasts have several great versions to celebrate from 1987. The Straws from April 6th, East Rutherford, July 24th, Oakland, August 23rd, Angel's Camp, and September 9th, Providence, All Excel. I'd rate this Philly straw right behind the Elite Four of 87. Riding the surge in JFK Stadium, Garcia shreds a pair of Ateno solos in the Minglewood Blues. Garcia and Midland played Cat and Mouse in the fast lane during the Cassidy Jam, the eighth song of the set. A focused China Cat rider sparkles after Cassidy. Because it's best known as a first set closer or a second set opener, and there would be neither in this long set, Cat Rider was a clever choice as the band transitioned to second set material. The energy of the set peaked here, and fine versions of Looks Like Rain and Terrapin Station ensued. Their show tailed off after drums, but nobody was bummed out because the Dylan show beckoned. The July 4th Dylan debut in Foxborough was unfortunate. Dylan hadn't played live in nearly a year, and his performance was rustier than a dirt shovel in a porous tool shed. However, there was great excitement when Dylan and Dead took the stage in Philly and charged into the familiar riff of Tangled Up in Blue. The Jerry Garcia band had played many excellent versions of Tangled, but this was the Dead's first attempt, and the beat sounded a bit off. Dylan's guitar strumming was ragged, and his vocals an unusually impeccable cadence were completely out of whack. Who was this guy in the black beret and red jacket, singing in a nasally whine? Only three years earlier, on his Europe 84 tour, Dylan delivered a transcendent version of Tangled Up in Blue with new lyrics that was featured on the album Real Live. The best was yet to come for Dylan and the Dead in Giant Stadium on July 12th. JFK... That was a mixed bag of adventure. Song number two featured Garcia on pedal steel guitar as Dylan whined and wheezed his way through I'll Be Your Baby Tonight. Redemption came during the fourth tune, the ballad of Frankie Lee and Judas Priest. Dylan sang this dialogue between the best of friends from John Wesley Harding live for the first time. Dylan remembers most of the words and does a nice job reconnecting with his creation as the dead play an up-tempo arrangement that worked. Jerry would go on to cover Frankie Lee with David Grisman in the studio. Later in the set, the Seven Legends attempted Simple Twist of Fate, somewhat in the style of the Jerry Garcia band. Dylan ran through this as if he would have preferred having root canal surgery. The show picked up some steam towards the end with the Joey all on the Watchtower finale, 
followed by a touch of Ray encore. Dylan and the Dead, playing an MTV video of a hit song in front of a packed stadium, must have seemed unfathomable after the prior year's disaster when they played together. Dylan, backed by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, opened for the Dead in Washington, D.C. On July 8, 1986, Dylan joined the Dead on stage for a pair of hideous performances. Two days later, Garcia lapsed into a diabetic coma. So as off-kilter as this JFK show was at times, the fact that the Dead and Dylan were back on track was reason to celebrate. The Ico Ico Jack Straw and Ballad of Frankie Lee and Judas Priest from 1787 can be found on my Positively Garcia YouTube page. Go to the playlist section and you can enjoy a playlist for July 10th as well as the other essential dates of Dead Allergy. Two years later, on July 10th, 1989, the Dead were back in a massive outdoor venue, Giant Stadium. These were the unavoidable realities of commercialism in the Grateful Dead universe. The Giant Stadium show is not a classic. When the Neville brothers joined the Dead during drums, the stage was set for a miraculous musical theater. Drum space logically flowed into Ico Ico, which was covered by the Neville Brothers on their 1981 album, Fayo on the Bayou. Garcia was pumped as he fired off preambles to the chorus. I'm talking about a hey now. I let me hear you say a hey now. An adventure saw along the watchtower that veers between rock, jazz, and anarchy follows. Out of nowhere, the dead were on the verge of salvaging an uneventful evening. The Neville brothers provided the impetus, and the dead were eager to show them what it's like to stop time in its tracks in a football stadium with 80,000 witnesses as they rang the bell for morning dew. When the dead played the first watchtower due in Madison Square Garden on September 18, 1987, it was the most thrilling moment of my years following the band. The next one I saw at Oxford Main on 7288 was almost anticlimactic. Seeing the Dew was always colossal, but in the late 80s, this once rare anthem had become somewhat commonplace. Garcia's vocals are engaging on the 71089 Dew. The middle solo rises like a tsunami and folds back in a giant stadium. Garcia finishes the last verse and shrieks, I guess it doesn't matter anyway, four times. The majestic jam emerges with frisky licks that cascade through the swampy Jersey night. At the 9-10 mark, Jerry strikes a chord that rings out as if he's punching a time clock. The creative direction of the solo changes as Garcia's fingers scramble through the scales, east and west, north and south and then he retraces his footprints in reverse. It's a stunning sequence, unlike anything in any other do. Garcia easily slides into the climatic crescendo, but the musicians are a step behind. Perhaps they were induced into trance by the bearded one's virtuosity. As Garcia rams this across the finish line with rapid chord fanning, I envision myself paying my taper friend and visit the following day to double copy of the show. I knew this was a solo I cherish. Since that night, I've listened to it at least 1,000 times. Sugar Magnolia was the ideal set closer. After an obligatory lead guitar surge, Jerry stepped back and let the driving rhythms engulf Giant Stadium as deadheads bopped and bounced to the certainty of the beat laid down by the Neville Brothers and the Dead. The show closed with a soothing knocking on heaven's door. Post drums came off like a short historical documentary on the history of American music. Ico Ico Neville Brothers Cajun, all along the watchtower, Hendrix still in classic rock. Morning Dew, Pure Jerry, Holy Grail, Sugar Magnolia, Grateful Dead Feel Good Anthem, and Knock on Heaven's Door, Dylan Spiritual. If you'd like to see footage of the Giant Stadium Morning Dew, go to my Positively Garcia YouTube page and check out the July 10th Deadology playlist. 
in the book, Deadology, I explored the July 10th, 1973 Garcia Sando show. Several of these performances were used on the iconic album, Live at Keystone. For more on the history of this and other essential dates, look for Deadology on Amazon. It's available in paperback and Kindle. Peace.